So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to tone match using a isolated guitar recording. The tone match block in the Axe FX3 has two uses, one for capturing live amp and then one for capturing a recorded guitar tone. And that's what we're doing today. Uh, something that you've got to make sure to do is have a semi-accurate signal chain going on for uh, what you're trying to capture. Uh, in this case, uh, the John Mayer Where the Light Is Belief Intro Tone. And this preset will be available on johnconshiroguitar.com. Uh, it's going to be part of kind of a iconic guitar tones type of uh, tone match pack. I uh, already have a Carlos Santana one in there. Uh, this one will be in there as well. Uh, just a single scene preset. Uh, nothing crazy and uh, it will be on my website. So first thing you gotta do, uh, let's turn this tone match block off. You have to have a signal chain that's representative of the actual um, tones that you're going for. So here is the tone that I have. Let's go ahead and turn delay, reverb on. All right, so here it is. All right, sounds great by itself, um, but we want to get even closer. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this guy off, this guy off, and I'm just switching back between these channels here because I have levels kind of preset to where I like them, and I don't want it to clip. So going back to channel A right here. So the amp using the ODS Clean 100, 100 Clean, uh, John used a couple two rocks and overdrive special for that performance, uh, but this is the best we can do right now. Here are my settings. Preamp, I changed the tube type. Uh, we know that John likes to use RCA tubes. Uh, definitely a little bit more warm and spongy feel. Uh, nothing here, change the power tube type. Nothing here, speaker impedance, uh, keep it on the four by 12 rumble. Uh, I kind of flip-flop back and forth between that and the two rock one. Uh, both sound great. This one just gives you a little bit more thump. Uh, let's go ahead and disable that. We're using the Blues OD. So like Blues Breaker into the Tube Screamer. And that is our signal chain. So next we have to kind of set up the tone match block. And what you want to do is for whatever your recording is, you want to set the reference source. So I have it at USB uh, one, two, and then you have to set the mode to offline. I personally like to set the averaging time to peak hold. So uh, it basically stops when you stop playing or whenever the recording stops. And then you can set the level to whatever you like it. Um, so here's where it's going to get a little uh, hard to tell uh, what you, what I am going to be uh, tone matching because you probably won't be able to hear it. I uh, haven't figured out how to do that for these videos yet, but I'm going to try my best to do that. And I'll probably splice in the clip for you in just a second. But what I'm going to do right now is go to capture and then uh, for the tone, uh, what I'm going to have to do is I'm gonna have to find the clip. And here's the clip that I have right now. And I'm going to loop it right here. And then I'm going to uh, tone match it. So uh, this is gonna be a little bit wonky, but let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm going to uh, capture the reference first 
and then I'm going to uh, capture the local as well. So here we go. Okay, so you, obviously you didn't hear that, but here is the plot on the reference. And then what I'm gonna have to do right here is I'm gonna hit start local, and then I'm going to uh, play basically what I was hearing. So I'm gonna start on the neck middle, and it's gonna sound really bad right now. Yeah, kind of hollowy. Um, this is uh, kind of a second take here. So you, I actually have uh, this um, plot right here on this graph um, already kind of preset. But if I didn't have that, it would sound uh, really uh, digital clipping, not very good. So I'm gonna start the local and then I'm gonna see what I get. All right, so here is the final tone that I got from Tone Match. And what you can do is you can change the amount, uh, which is pretty cool. You can smooth it out a little bit. You can see what it does right here. It smooths out those peaks, but I just kind of want all that information in there. And then um, right here, you can see what it, it does with the amount. But here's, uh, here's what we got. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the reverb and the delay. And here's what it sounds like. All right, pretty good. Here's what I'm gonna do now. I'm going to go ahead and we're gonna export this one. And I'm going to uh, save it right here just as I did before. Export as I believe where the light is click yes, and then it's gonna go through its uh, cycling right here. Uh, don't forget to turn the tone match block off. And then I'm gonna turn this one on. Now, at its stock setting, it's gonna be at zero dB. Uh, it's gonna be kind of quiet, so here's what it sounds like. As you can see right here. Which might work for some of you. I like to push things a little bit harder and I saw somewhere that uh, 6 dB is kind of the go-to, 5 to 6. Um, let's actually go with 5. Let's do that. And now let's hear the final tone. <laughs> Uh, that is how you go through an offline uh, tone match process, uh, capturing a recorded guitar tone. And I'm going to run a couple clips at the end, just kind of going back and forth between the recorded guitar tone and what I came up with for the tone match, just so you can hear how accurate it is. But I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, this uh, kind of demonstration of the tone block, uh, the tone match block. It's a really powerful tool to kind of get you that sound you are looking for. Now here's the demo of both the tone match and the recorded guitar tone.